Welcome back to Federal Uncovered, your go-to source for navigating federal careers. Today, we're diving deep into what many of you have been eagerly asking for, the complete guide to becoming a U.S. Marshal. I will be unpacking the qualifications, breaking down the fitness standards, decoding the medical requirements, and much more. Stick around, because each section could be the key to unlocking your path to this esteemed role. So, let's get started. All right, folks, let's jump straight into what you're all eager to know, the qualifications you need to become a U.S. Marshal. I'm going to break it down for you in a way that's both clear and concise, so make sure to take notes if you need to. Be a U.S. citizen. Be between the ages of 21 and 36. Must be appointed before 37th birthday. Have a bachelor's degree or three years of qualifying work experience or a combination of education and experience equivalent to the GL07 level. Provide proof of U.S. citizenship undergo pre-employment medical suitability and meet medical requirements for the position. Undergo periodic examination evaluation of ability to meet the medical requirements for the position. Undergo pre-employment physical fitness testing and test biannually for the duration of career. Pass a pre-employment drug screening. This position is a testing designation position, TDP, and subject to random drug testing. Pass an initial single scope background investigation, SSBI, and successfully pass periodic reinvestigations. Be able to obtain and maintain a top secret clearance. Qualify in the use of multiple firearms and carry a handgun. Possess a valid driver's license at the time of appointment. Sign a mobility agreement and memorandum of understanding. Deputy U.S. Marshals will be placed in a duty location that meets the needs of the agency and required to remain at their initial duty station for a minimum of three years. So now that we've covered the basic qualifications required to apply for a position as a Deputy U.S. Marshal, let's shift our focus to another crucial aspect of the hiring process, the fitness standards. The U.S. Marshal Service takes physical readiness very seriously, which is why they have a comprehensive fitness in total, or FIT certification test. This test is composed of four key components. One, 1 1.5 mile run to assess your cardiovascular fitness. Two, one minute push-up test to measure upper body strength. Three, one minute sit-up test for core strength. Four, sit and reach test to gauge your flexibility. If you wish to graduate from basic deputy U.S. Marshal training, you must pass all four of these tests at a minimum level of 70%. This needs to be achieved within 90 days before starting your training. If you fail any part of the test, you'll have another opportunity to retake it later. It's worth noting that these fitness tests aren't just a one-time thing. You'll be expected to pass them biannually for the duration of your career. So staying in shape is a lifelong commitment in this role. For those interested in preparing for the fitness test, the U.S. Marshal Service has developed a fit readiness program. This program is designed to assist you in assessing your physical readiness, providing wellness resources, and educating you on how to prevent overuse injuries. I'll be leaving a link to this document in the description below for those who are interested. Now, let's get into the specific standards. If you're a male between the ages of 20 and 29, here are the benchmarks you should aim for. Superior, run 1.5 miles in less than eight minutes and 14 seconds. Do more than 61 push-ups, more than 54 sit-ups, and a sit and reach of over 22.9 inches. Excellent. If you fall between 8, 14, and 10, 16 minutes for the run, 47 to 61 push-ups, 47 to 54 sit-ups, and a sit and reach between 20.5 and 22.9 inches. Good. For a good rating, Aim for a run between 10.17 and 11.41 minutes, 37 to 46 push-ups, 42 to 46 sit-ups, and a sit and reach between 18.5 and 20.4 inches. Fair. Here, you'd need to run between 11.42 and 12.51 minutes, perform 29 to 36 push-ups, 38 to 41 sit-ups, and reach between 16.5 and 18.4 inches. Minimum? At a minimum, you should be able to run 1.5 miles in 12.18 minutes, do 33 push-ups, 40 sit-ups, and reach 17.5 inches. Poor. Poor ratings are given for runs between 12.52 and 14.13 minutes, 
22 to 28 push-ups, 33 to 37 sit-ups, and a sit and reach between 14.4 and 16.4 inches. Very poor. Anything below these poor ratings is considered very poor. Remember, maintaining physical fitness is a long-term commitment in this role, so make sure you're ready to meet these standards not just once, but throughout your career. So we've covered the qualifications and fitness standards, but there's another critical aspect to consider before embarking on a career as a Deputy U.S. Marshal, the medical requirements. Being physically fit is crucial, but you also need to meet specific medical standards to ensure that you can perform your duties effectively and safely. Let's dive into some of the key medical requirements. Vision, 2020 binocular. Vision is required. If your vision doesn't naturally meet this standard, it can be corrected with lenses. Uncorrected vision must test at 2200 or better in each eye. Be cautious about undergoing any vision correction surgery as it could potentially disqualify you depending on the outcome. Near vision. Your near vision must be 2040 or better, and this can be either corrected or uncorrected. Color. Vision. You must have sufficient color vision to distinguish basic colors, and your depth perception needs to be clinically normal. Hearing. Your hearing will be tested without aids using an audiometer. You will be evaluated for specific frequencies individually in each year, covering 500, 1000, 2000, and 3000 hits. Now, there are also disqualifying medical conditions you should be aware of. Diabetes, mellitus, convulsive disorders, hernias, orthopedic conditions that affect mobility, stability, flexibility, and strength. Hypertension, heart disease, color vision, deficits, and eye surgery. These conditions are considered disqualifying because deputy U.S. Marshals must be physically able to safely and efficiently perform the full range of duties. So, if you have any of these conditions, you may not meet the medical standards required for this role. Remember, these requirements are not just about ticking a box, they are in place to ensure that you're equipped to handle the high-stress, demanding scenarios that you could face in the field. So, you're sold on the idea of becoming a Deputy U.S. Marshal, you meet the qualifications, you're up for the physical and medical challenges, what comes next? How do you go from interested applicant to wearing that prestigious badge? Well, there's a journey ahead, but luckily, it's a well-marked path. First things first, you'll want to attend an information session. This could be in person, or if you're lucky, they might offer it virtually. Think of this as a meet and greet with the Marshal Service. It's where you can ask questions, get clarifications, and essentially see if this career is the right fit for you. If you're eager to get started, reach out to your local district recruiting officer to arrange an information session. I will be leaving the link down below in which you can find your local district recruiting officer. Feeling good after the information session? Excellent. Now you're invited to actually apply for the Deputy U.S. Marshal position. This is when things get real. After you've applied and you meet the minimum qualifications, you'll be scheduled for an interview. This happens at various locations across the country, so you might even get a little travel out of it. Now, if your interview goes well, you're not quite in the clear yet. You'll receive what's known as a tentative offer letter within 60 to 90 days. Don't celebrate just yet. This is basically your golden ticket to the pre-employment process, not a guarantee of a job. Next up are the prerequisites. You'll undergo a thorough medical exam to make sure you meet all those standards we talked about earlier. You'll also complete a background investigation because, let's be honest, they want to make sure you're as upstanding as you say you are. So you've navigated the prerequisites and everything checks out. What's next? You're now ready for selection. This means you're in the pool of potential hires. If you're selected from this pool, you'll get another letter. This time, it's a tentative selection offer. Again, it's not party time just yet. This offer is only finalized when you pass a fitness test and a drug test. And when you do, then it's time for the fireworks because you'll get your final offer letter. From there, you might head to the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center or perhaps start at a district office, depending on the hiring needs at the time. So there you have it, the roadmap to becoming a Deputy U.S. Marshal. It's not a short journey, as it could take one to three years to get hired, but boy, is it worth it. All right, folks, 
You're going to want to listen up for this next part. It's all about the money, your paycheck to be precise, and some seismic shifts in what being a U.S. Marshal is all about. So, until this year, U.S. Marshals were listed under the OPM code 0083, essentially lumping them in with general police officers. But now, they're transitioning to 1811s. And this isn't just a change in code, it's a game changer for your career. Why? First off, let's talk pay raise. The new classification includes what's known as LEAP, Law Enforcement Availability Pay, which is an incredible 25% increase on top of your standard GS scale salary. That's right, a whole 25%. But that's not all. Being in 1811 means you're not just stuck doing court duties. In fact, the focus is shifting more towards fieldwork and investigations. And just a little inside scoop, the marshals are planning to introduce a new position soon that will take over those courthouse duties, freeing you up for more action in the field. So, let me break it down for you. Better pay with a clear career ladder that goes from GS7 to GS13, a significant bump in salary with LEAP, and a transition towards more specialized, field-oriented tasks. This is more than just a job upgrade, it's a career evolution. Are you pumped? Because you should be. So, you've made it through the rigorous selection process, you're pumped about the pay and the opportunity for field work, and now you're about to embark on a transformative journey at the National Basic Training Academy. Let's set the scene. You'll be heading to Glencoe, Georgia, a location strategically situated between Savannah and Jacksonville. This isn't your run-of-the-mill training program, folks. For 18 adrenaline-fueled weeks, you'll be under the wing of some of the finest instructors from both the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center and the U.S. Marshals Service. They'll school you in everything from legal procedures and driver training to mastering the art of surveillance and high-threat trials. Yes, you heard that right. You'll even dive into topics like less-than-lethal devices and tactics and structure entry, because this is about becoming a well-rounded law enforcement officer, ready for anything the job or life throws your way. But hold up, before you even step foot at the academy, make sure you've nailed that physical fitness test within the last 90 days. You're going to need to be in excellent physical shape. And when I say excellent, I mean it. Imagine running distances between 1.5 to 10 miles, breaking into sweat-inducing calisthenics and tackling obstacle courses. Remember, the climate in Southern Georgia isn't forgiving. Heat exhaustion is real, so start hydrating weeks before your arrival. On the academic side, prepare to hit the books. You'll need to clear a total of five exams throughout the course, each requiring a minimum passing score of 70%. And it doesn't stop at multiple choice questions. You'll engage in practical exercises where you'll need to demonstrate that you didn't just memorize terms, you understand them. For those of you who are detail-oriented, don't fret. You'll get a heads up from the U.S. Marshals Service on when to report for training and what to bring. You'll even get a class supervisor for your training cohort, your go-to person for all inquiries specific to your class. And don't worry about the dress code. Uniforms are provided, so just bring some comfy personal clothing for your downtime. So there you have it, a complete rundown of what you can expect as you transition from an applicant to a fully trained Deputy U.S. Marshal. This is the real deal, a challenging yet rewarding pathway to a career like no other. And there we have it, folks, the comprehensive guide on becoming a Deputy U.S. Marshal. If you've made it this far in the video, let me just say thank you. Your time and attention mean the world to me. And I'm here to tell you that every second you invest in pursuing your dreams is a second well spent. Speaking of pursuing dreams, let me share a quick personal story with you. I remember a time when I faced a setback that felt insurmountable. It was easy to think that perhaps I wasn't cut out for what I wanted to do. But instead of giving up, I doubled down. I studied harder, trained smarter, and kept my eyes on the prize. It wasn't easy, but the thing is, nothing in life that's worth achieving is ever easy. Fast forward to today, and I can't begin to express how grateful I am that I didn't throw in the towel. So if you're thinking of embarking on this journey, remember, 
that perseverance is your best friend. Greatness doesn't come from what you do occasionally. It comes from what you do consistently. It takes hard work, an insatiable desire to improve, and a relentless will to act. If you found this video helpful or inspiring, I'd be thrilled if you could give it a like and share it with others who might benefit from it. Your support enables me to continue doing what I love, and for that, I'm eternally grateful. And hey, drop a comment below. I read every single one, and your kind words never fail to make my day. So once again, thank you for being here. Take action, stay persistent, and let's all aim for greatness together. Signing off.